ESPN, we continue with more boxing action. This bout is scheduled for four rounds in the super featherweight division. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action will be Larry Chavez. Introducing to you first, fighting to my right out of the red corner, he's wearing the black trunks with white trim and weighed in at 132 and one half pounds. Hailing from Fort Wayne, Indiana, he has a professional record of one win with one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Reggie, the Assassin Sanders. And his opponent fighting directly across from him out of the blue corner. He's wearing the gold trunks with the black lettering and weighed in at 131 pounds. Hailing from Grand Rapids, Michigan, he earned a bronze medal representing the United States at the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. And now as a professional, he has one win with no losses. That win coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. Once again, here's your referee, Larry Chavez, now to give the instructions. Yeah, we went over you guys' instructions in the dressing rooms earlier. Did both of you understand them fully? Do either one of you have any questions? I want a good, clean fight from both of you. Listen to me at all times. All right? Touch club now. Good luck to both of you. There is Reggie Sanders from Fort Wayne, Indiana, one and one on his pro career. And Floyd Mayweather Jr. His father, Floyd Mayweather Sr., right. serving a five and a half year prison term at a federal prison in Milan, Michigan. Welterweight contender in the 70s and 80s, convicted in 1993 of drug trafficking. And when Floyd Jr. was a kid, his father used to put him on his shoulders and help him hit the speed bag. He says, when my dad comes out of jail, I'll be there for him. I'll put him on my shoulders and make him a better life so he doesn't have to eat bologna sandwiches the rest <laughs> of his life. Not that there's anything wrong with bologna. No, but exclusively it's not good. It's a family affair. Floyd has his uh, uncles, Roger Mayweather, of course, a two-time world champion. And, uh, Jeff. In the corner. and Jeff, thank you. I knew I'd forget one of those Mayweathers. Jeff, who is uh, a fine uh, uh, boxer as well, both working with him. And um, you can't learn from two better guys. Here on ESPN on October 11th in Las Vegas, we saw... Floyd Mayweather with a second round knockout of Roberto Apodaca. Mayweather won a bronze in the Olympics. In fact, on July the 31st, he became the first American in 20 years to beat a Cuban in the Olympics as he edged Lorenzo Aragon 12 to 11, then lost that controversial fight in the bronze medal round to Serafim Todorov. And many, many felt Mayweather was a winner. Yeah, I thought he won that bout, and I thought Floyd Mayweather could have easily emerged as the boxer to win the Val Barker trophy in that Olympic tournament. You know, in his first pro fight, Apodaca landed only two punches against him. It was a short-lived fight, but he literally landed only two punches. The Sanders. left hook of Mayweather is his big weapon. Sanders trying to dig to the body. Now, is it a problem for Mayweather that he's fighting a southpaw in his second pro fight, or does his extensive amateur experience negate that? Yeah. The second part of what you said is, is in fact, the truth. It's, uh, uh, he has fought so many southpaws as an amateur that he's, he's very hip to what to do to him. And you see it here. He's moving off to his left, trying to cut that ring off. He wants to throw the hook to the body and the head. And you feel footwork is the key? Yeah, it really is. You want to move to your left, and you see Mayweather doing it, get his left foot outside the right foot of the southpaw you're fighting. And that's where Mayweather is. He's trying to get that hook in there. Took a nice right hand, though. Has not been a bad first round for Reggie Sanders. Mayweather can strike quickly. He's got a lot of power at this weight. He's capable of boxing, make no mistake about that, but uh, he is in many respects a pure puncher. Mayweather hooking to the body. Sanders got caught up in the ropes there, and Mayweather took a little advantage of it by landing a couple of shots. Round number one coming to an end. This one is scheduled for four. Floyd Mayweather Jr. against Reggie Sanders on ESPN.
Right here at the Tingley Coliseum in Albuquerque. It's about 45, maybe 50 degrees indoors. And Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Reggie Sanders continue with their scheduled four-rounder here in round two. And look at Sanders putting his punches together. He says, I don't care if you're an Olympian. I don't care if you get good press clippings. I don't care if your uncle is a champion. I came here to try and win this fight. That's what I'm doing. Well, he didn't say all that literally, but that's what he meant. In between rounds, Miguel Diaz humming raw high to yeah, Mayweather. I, I noticed that. There's the numbers. Mayweather with a very slight edge. Miguel, a man of many talents, he's going to rule him, rule him, rule I don't know what that was all about, but it was a nice tune. I don't know if Mayweather was hurt there or if he just stumbled if their feet got tangled. But so far, Sanders controlling the action here in round two. He really is. He's going after Floyd Mayweather and landing some body shots and not allowing Mayweather to get his punches off. Now, the danger in doing that is Mayweather's a very good counterpuncher. There's an example. And you could walk right into something, and it would be lights out. Kind of fun to be on in the afternoon. We're a night owls unboxing. Very seldom on ESPN are we on in the afternoon. We're in the oh, good hook. There's the hook by Mayweather. It may look wide, but it's got pop. Referee Larry Chavez steps in. Hey, don't forget, right after ESPN's championship boxing, college football. Tennessee and Vanderbilt, Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey with the call. And a lot of people, good hooks by a lot of people think Vanderbilt has a chance for an upset in that game. So it should be, uh, I bet it's going to be a close game. And Sanders continuing to press Mayweather. But now Mayweather's trying, starting to get some of his power shots in there, that right hand and the hook. That's the combination punching of Floyd Mayweather. We saw evidence of it at the Olympics and, of course, in his first fight against Apodaca when he threw 35 punches per round and landed 49% of his punches, 69% of his power shots. That's what you do against the lefty. You whack away with left hooks to the body and the head. Final 30 seconds of round two. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if uh, Jeff, who is still an active boxer, gets in and is very adept at, adept at switching, spars with Floyd and gets in there and works as the lefty when they're facing a lefty. <laughs> Final seconds of round two, scheduled for four. Floyd Mayweather and Reggie Sanders on ESPN. Round number three underway in Albuquerque. Bob Papo along with Al Bernstein on ESPN's championship boxing. Floyd Mayweather, a bronze medalist in the 96 Olympics, taking on Reggie Sanders. And so far, Al Sanders has not backed down from the high-profiled Olympian. No, he really came after him in the second round, but... Floyd Mayweather reacting very, very well, counterpunched extremely well, and had himself a very good second round. And this will give us an indication of how well Mayweather did in round two. Landing right at that 49%, which is exactly what he landed in his first pro fight overall. Nice to see Bob Canobio and Logan Hobson from Punch Profile make it here to Albuquerque. Of course, they worked last night's show on the deuce in Roanoke, and they made it here with time to spare. Driving through winding roads in the Ozarks to get to an airplane, this is what I call dedication, or possibly insanity. I'm not sure which. <laughs> Sanders giving Mayweather enough movement to negate Mayweather's jab. And the interesting thing about Mayweather is that He's also a patient boxer. And we're seeing evidence that he wants to make sure he lands what he needs to land in this case. Even the crowd booing a little bit, he's not going to get crazy. He's, got, he's attained control of this bout, and he's waiting for the next opportunity to land something big. Do you think he's confused at all? No, I really don't. Good right hand there, but I don't think, I think he knows what to do in there, and he's been waiting for those opportunities to get in the inside for the uppercut and also the, the hook, which he started landing toward the end of the last round. Well, there's a cut over the left eye of Floyd Mayweather. I don't know if it came from a punch or a clash of heads. If it's from a punch, he may have a problem. Yeah, it's near the right eyebrow. That may hasten his effort to try and end this bout.
Right now, Reggie Sanders doing a pretty good job of making himself a target. Mayweather can't hit. He's staying on the outside. Mayweather's not really getting off to the left as much as he needs to land those double left hooks to the body and the head. He was doing it in round two. The jab's starting to become a weapon for him. Fans here in Albuquerque not pleased with what they're seeing from the Olympian. He got a nice ovation when he entered the ring. Well, it's been a more tactical third round, but Mayweather's doing pretty well here in this round, using the jab now, establishing that. Final 10 seconds of round three. I have to give Sanders some credit, though. The fourth and final round to come after this timeout. ESPN's World Championship Boxing is brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you fresh beer tastes better. Adonis Cruz will challenge Johnny Tapia for his WBO Junior Bantamweight Championship. Look at him. He's all bundled up, Al. He's got the Colombo look there with that uh, raincoat. But, you know, this is his first fight outside of Nicaragua. And uh, he was bothered the other night uh, at the weigh-in and everything. He was chilly there, so he's got to be cold. It's going to make a difference for him. And that was in a hotel ballroom where the temperature was in the mid-50s. He will step into a ring that is no more than 50 degrees. Welcome to the United States. <laughs> and I think part of it is they set up this morning for this event after that concert. The, the doors were open a lot in the morning here at this arena. They're closed now, but boy, the cool air just stayed right in here. This fourth and final round underway, and let's see what Floyd Mayweather does. Do you think he's winning the fight, Al? Yeah, I believe he is winning. I've actually given him all three rounds, even though one and three were very close. But... He, what he is saying here is a Reggie Sanders who's very determined, who came here to fight. And these are the kind of guys you want to face anyway as you move up. And let's give Reggie Sanders a lot of credit. He has really been in there trying and has made some things happen. Miguel Diaz doing a good job with the cut over the right eyebrow of Mayweather. That was sustained in the last round. Mayweather did not realize he was bleeding until after the round. Now that is an illegal maneuver, but one that is used so often by fighters we almost forget that it's illegal as Mayweather pushed Sanders aside. Mayweather now using a lot more movement, making Sanders come to him. The fans in Albuquerque are not pleased with the style, but as Mayweather has told us, I want to box, box, box and not take too much punishment in this sport. The total punch is indicating Mayweather with the lead, but not a huge lead. Landing in the 40% area and throwing just about the same number of punches as Sanders. And Mayweather, Mayweather claiming he was butted again from Sanders. Now there was no indication that cut cap came from a butt. We don't know if it did or a clash of heads, we should say. We don't know if it did or not. Mayweather not using anything behind that jab. Throwing the jab, not doubling up with it. And I, I dare say facing a lefty has bothered him a little bit more than we maybe thought it would. In the second round, he was getting a terrific rhythm of fighting the lefty, getting in there, digging left hooks to the body and the head, coming with the right hand, then he stopped. Again, he sidesteps Sanders, who cuts the pie a little bit. There's the hook downstairs from Mayweather. Two punches are important to him in this bout, and he hasn't used either of them as much as he would like. The left hook and the right uppercut. Mayweather has a tendency to get cocky, which may or may not have hurt him in the amateur game. In the pro game, it probably will not have any This is where Mayweather should be, Bob. I, I agree with your point there. That's where he should be, landing stuff on the inside, hooks to the body and the head. He really wants to be on the inside against him. Well, that was a short round, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a two minute and 50 second round. We will find out if Floyd Mayweather remains undefeated. Plus, Al will hop in the ring and talk with him. Reggie Sanders, a solid performance as ESPN's championship boxing continues from Albuquerque, New Mexico after these words. Welcome back to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Bob Papa along with Al Bernstein, Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Reggie Sanders, a tough four rounder. In round number four, Sanders threw 10 more punches but Mayweather did land four more, so a very tight round number four. Who was the winner? The judges are still tabulating the scorecards. 
And we take a look at the punches throughout the fight, and you see Mayweather very efficient, although Sanders threw seven more. It was Mayweather who landed 23 more punches and a higher percentage. For our ring announcer, here's Thomas Traber. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Levi Martinez scores about 40 to 39. Judge William Gant scores about 40 to 36. And Judge Sandy Pino scores about 39 to 37. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decisions you have. What did he tell you?